the Tamil people and the other minorities, especially the Tamil and the Muslim minority in Sri Lanka, uh, were discriminated against. Sri Lanka is a teardrop-shaped island off the southern tip of India. There are two major ethnic groups in Sri Lanka, the Sinhala and the Tamils. The Sinhala are the majority and are predominantly Buddhist. The ethnic Tamils are the largest minority and are predominantly Hindu, with some practicing Christians and Muslims. Tamils live primarily in the northern and eastern parts of the country, and the Sinhala live in the southern and western parts. While Sri Lanka was a colony of Great Britain, the British allegedly elevated Tamils to positions of status and governmental power. When Sri Lanka gained independence from Great Britain in 1948, the Sinhala quickly took over the government and used their majority status to pass many discriminatory laws, to disenfranchise one million Tamils, and to limit employment opportunities for all Tamils. This began a surge in Sinhala ethno-nationalism that propelled politicians into power when they adopted increasingly extremist, anti-Tamil policies. In 1956, Sinhala was declared the official language which barred non-speakers from government jobs and higher education. In 1972, the constitution was altered to enshrine Buddhism as the national religion, further alienating minority groups. As a response to this political oppression, the Tamils began peaceful demonstrations, protesting against the discriminatory government policies. The government responded with violence. This began the militarization of traditional Tamil areas, which created an environment in which harassment and assaults upon Tamil civilians became commonplace. Over time, the violence against Tamils escalated dramatically. In May of 1958, hundreds of Tamils were killed in anti-Tamil riots. Over 100,000 were forced to flee to their homes in the north and east. In 1977, the Tamil people voted overwhelmingly for the Tamil United Liberation Front a political party campaigning on the basis of an independent state for Tamils, called Tamil Ulam. This prompted anti-Tamil rioting in September of 1977, which led to the deaths of more than 300 innocent Tamils. In 1981, Sri Lankan armed forces set fire to the historic Jaffna Public Library, which contained over 90,000 irreplaceable Tamil books. This was declared by international observers as an act of cultural genocide. Following these tragic events were the infamous anti-Tamil riots in July of 1983. These riots, orchestrated by the Sri Lankan government, were carried out by Sinhala mobs and Buddhist monks who attacked Tamil civilians in the capital city of Colombo. The mobs looted and burned the homes, businesses, and property of Tamils in Colombo and across the country as the Sri Lankan government distributed addresses of Tamil-owned property. During this time, the Sri Lankan government shut down media sources so that the international community would remain ignorant about the riots. State forces and policemen turned their backs or participated themselves as the mobs were killing Tamils. This violent period is now known as Black July and over 3,000 Tamils were killed. After these devastating riots and 30 years of nonviolent demonstrations, which the government violently repressed, thousands of Tamil youth began an armed struggle in northeast Sri Lanka, fighting for an independent Tamil state. The foremost Tamil rebel group is known as the Liberation Tigers of Tamilulam, or the LTTE. The Sri Lankan government declared the LTTE to be a terrorist organization and used this to impose draconian prevention of terrorism acts and unlimited state of emergencies. In 1987, the Indian Army was invited by the Sri Lankan government to occupy the northern and eastern parts of the island to oversee the implementation of an accord between the two countries. The Indian Army was known as the Indian Peacekeeping Force, or the IPKF. Within the first two months of occupation, the IPKF, meant to act as a peacekeeping body, ended up committing gross human rights violations against the Tamil people in the name of fighting the LTTE, according to Amnesty International reports. 
The IPKF atrocities resulted in the deaths of nearly 4,000 Tamil civilians. By 1990, the IPKF withdrew its army. In 1991, Rajiv Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of India, who oversaw the IPKF operation, was assassinated at a campaign rally and Indian officials immediately blamed the attack on the LTTE. In the 1990s, the government of Sri Lanka promulgated a War for Peace campaign in which they aimed to inflict massive casualties against the Tamil population through indiscriminate bombings of churches, schools, temples, and civilian settlements, displacing nearly one million civilians. A ceasefire was signed in 2002 and negotiations began between the Sri Lankan government and the LTTE. During this time, the 10-year-long embargo of medicine, food, fuel, and other necessities was temporarily lifted, allowing these much-needed supplies to reach the suffering Tamil people in the north and east. In December of 2004, an Indian Ocean earthquake triggered a massive tsunami that hit Sri Lanka taking the lives of 35,000 people. Out of billions of dollars in aid generously donated to Sri Lanka by the international community, almost none of the funds reached the north or east. The Sri Lankan government and the LTTE created a joint mechanism to distribute donor funds equally to all areas of the island damaged by the tsunami. However, the Sri Lankan Supreme Court invalidated this mechanism as unconstitutional. As a result, the Tamil people in the north and east were deprived of critical recovery funds. The World Bank estimated that two-thirds of the damage caused by the tsunami in Sri Lanka was sustained by the war-torn North and East. The relief organization Refugees International reported a clear disparity between the rebuilding efforts in the Singhala South and those in the Tamil North and East. Meanwhile, anti-corruption watchdog group Transparency International said there is no explanation from the Sri Lankan government for more than $500 million in missing tsunami relief funds. In November 2005, Singhala nationalist Mahinda Rajapaksa was elected to the presidency on an extremist platform. Shortly thereafter, the 2002 ceasefire began to collapse with the commencement of an aerial bombing campaign on Tamil villages in the north and east. In June 2006, the Sri Lankan Navy surrounded the biggest church in Sri Lanka, located in Pisale, in which refugees had congregated for safety. Soldiers fired shots and threw grenades into the packed church, killing three civilians and injuring hundreds. In August 2006, 17 Tamil aid workers from the French NGO Action Against Hunger were murdered execution style in Trincomalee. United Nations official John Holmes called this attack probably the single worst crime committed against humanitarian workers in recent history. He called Sri Lanka one of the worst places in the world for humanitarian workers. Despite demands for a further inquiry by independent investigators from the UN, Amnesty International, and other groups, the Sri Lankan government continues to hinder the investigation. The Nordic-led ceasefire monitors suspect the Sri Lankan army was responsible for these killings. In the same month, the Sri Lankan Air Force targeted and dropped 16 bombs on the Sanjole girls' home in Muletivu killing 54 schoolgirls and injuring 129 other girls. UNICEF decried this attack, calling the school children innocent victims of violence. In August of 2007, after another year of escalating violence and human rights abuses, Human Rights Watch condemned the Sri Lankan government for having given its security forces a green light to use dirty war tactics. Since 2005, Three Tamil members of parliament, two former members of parliament, and two member of parliament candidates have been assassinated. These Tamil MPs were all known to be vocal in upholding the rights of Tamil civilians and have spoken out about the injustices of the Sri Lankan government. On New Year's Day 2008, a Tamil MP was shot dead in a temple. This MP had publicly announced his intention to provide evidence of the Sri Lankan government's active involvement in abductions and killings in Jaffna. Before this, another MP was shot and killed in a church in Batikolo on Christmas Eve in 2005. Throughout the conflict, numerous Tamil priests and journalists have been abducted and killed. In April of 2005, 
Taraki Sivaram, a prominent Tamil journalist, was found beaten and shot in a high security zone in Colombo. In 2006, Father Jim Brown of St. Mary's Church in Alepati went missing and was later found mutilated off the coast of the Jaffna Peninsula. The UN Working Group on Enforced or Involuntary Disappearances said in 2006 and 2007, Sri Lanka had the highest number of disappearances in the world, and Human Rights Watch held the Sri Lankan security forces and its paramilitaries responsible. Amnesty International said of the hundreds of Jaffna Tamils who disappeared in Sri Lankan military custody, nearly all have died as a result of torture or have been deliberately killed in detention. Further, Amnesty International has found reliable evidence suggesting that bodies may have been disposed of in laboratory pits, disused wells, and shallow graves. To this day, mass graves have been found in over nine villages, often in close proximity to Sri Lankan army camps. Currently, the situation in Sri Lanka has deteriorated into full-scale war. Doctors Without Borders and Time magazine rank Sri Lanka as one of the 10 most underreported crises in the world. On January 2, 2008, Sri Lankan President Rajapaksa officially withdrew from the ceasefire between the government and the LTTE, prompting outcries from foreign governments and human rights and aid organizations concerned about the escalating death toll on innocent civilians. Since the government's unilateral withdrawal from the ceasefire, the government has launched an intensive military offensive against the LTTE-controlled areas in the north and east, retaking territory in the east. The military is using indiscriminate aerial bombings and artillery shelling against Tamil civilians and combatants. Amnesty International reported that over 300,000 Tamils have fled from the military advance. An aid worker from the World Food Program commented on the wretched conditions in the north, saying, It is as basic as it can be. I haven't seen anything so basic since when I was in Somalia. In September, the government ordered all international aid organizations to leave the LTTE-controlled region in the north, known as Venni. Human Rights Watch has criticized this decision and condemned the Sri Lankan government for playing games with aid organizations. The New York-based Genocide Prevention Project recently published a report in which Sri Lanka was among the top eight red alert countries where genocide was underway or at high risk of breaking out. The situation continues to escalate daily.